may be time for some Nick Seriani Corleone to double moonwalk some ass. Yo, everybody, ain't doing King Ding Bang here. So today we have come with the. <laughs> It's a big ass dog. Dallas still stinks. Yo, by the way, King Ding back here, and I hope everybody's having a great day. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are as excited as I am that the Eagles are only two weeks away. Two weeks away from reporting to training camp. I am pumped. I am ready to go. Wait, rerun. <laughs> I cannot wait for football to begin, especially, especially after the June that we had with the Sixers getting tossed and totally ruining my summer. The Sixers, man. I need football and I need it now. So if you guys haven't, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. You're not going to want to miss any of the football content here. We stream every Eagles game, every preseason game, every regular season game. We stream most NFC East games. We stream the Colts this year. We stream the Dolphins this year because we own their picks. So we're going to be busy. I'm going to be Mark Holmes and you during training camp, and uh, you're not going to want to miss it. A lot of live streams, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, now, as we wait for training camp, okay, as we wait for uh, training camp to get here. There are big shoes that still have to drop with the Eagles. Earths, corners, all that. We have talked about it. But what would training camp be without somebody trashing our coach before the season even starts? Before he even coaches one game? Before he had one practice? We're already getting anonymous sources saying that Nick Sariani is being questioned by the players. Unbelievable. Totally unbelievable, but I'll take it. I'll take it because it's going to come back in everybody's face, okay? Uh, now, before we get into that whole thing, because I'm fired up about that today, man. That that just, ugh, that irks me. But before we get into that, the Eagles did have an announcement. They will be having joint practices uh, this summer with the New England Patriots, who stink, and the New York Jets, who stink. Okay, so the Patriots uh, joint practices, I believe, are going to be the 17th and 18th of August. And then the Jets, I believe, are the 24th, 25th of August, both leading up to the preseason game that they're going to play with those teams. I like joint practices as long as you never make it like an inner, you know, like a divisional joint practices, which don't happen in football. Um, but but I, I think this is a good opportunity to, you know, practice against other guys because these guys, they're going with, you know, they're going at it with each other uh, every day. It's good to have fresh bodies, and I hope they lay out Nelson Stinkle. I hope he's going across the middle and boom, he gets hit. Kevon Wallace sends him to next week. Double moonwalk that ass. You know what I mean? Because he's going to be practicing with the New England Patriots. Uh, that's why he plays with the New England Patriots, not with the Philadelphia Eagles because he's I, I said it. I know people get mad, but that's how I feel. Can't help it. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. He stinks. Gonna make Raider. Oh, not Raider fans. Gonna make Patriot fans drink. That's right, because he's on his third team. I can't believe they paid him that money. But in all seriousness and not joking around, all that stuff, uh, Patriots practice. Uh, I think that's a great thing, great opportunity uh, for the Eagles, for the Patriots, but also for the GMs. They can talk. Uh, you know, amongst each other. Maybe you have a trade you want to work out, something like that. Uh, maybe you just want to scout some of these players that are on the bubble uh, for their roster that may get cut, that you say, hey, look, this dude just got cut. We really liked him, what we saw of him. Let's bring him in. Let's sign him to practice squad, things like that. So there's a lot of opportunity, okay? Um, so I'm all for it, you know what I mean? Now, When we are dealing with the Philadelphia Eagles, it, it always seems like somebody has something to say from an unnamed source, from a, a, from a player or a front office or a coaching staff. Somebody has something to say, but they're always unnamed, okay? Um, Michael Robinson, NFL Network, former player, came out and said that certain players on the Eagles are, are questioning are questioning how good Nick Sirianni could be as a coach, questioning how he's going to be. 
So once again, before he's even practiced, before he's even had a preseason game or one call, he is already being judged. And of course, these are unnamed sources, okay? It's very easy for me to say uh, anything with the unnamed source, okay? We have seen this uh, the last few years everywhere, right? Anytime somebody wants to say something, it's, oh, it's an unnamed source, unnamed source. I could say, uh, Mark Holmes is sacrificing 25 chickens today, uh, according to an unnamed source. Or Michael Anthony, where's the fitness, fell asleep eating customer's fries in his Uber while he was driving, according to unnamed sources. Or Cop Pizzle, Cop Pizzle ate an alligator today with his mayonnaise sandwiches, according to unnamed sources. But those, I think, are true. But that, that is something separate. Anyways, anybody can say that. Anybody can say, well, unnamed sources. That doesn't mean that it's not true. Also, he really, somebody really could have said it. Who the hell knows? But to me, it doesn't really matter uh, because he's got to go out and he's got to coach. He's got to go out and do his job. And if he does his job, nobody can say nothing. Perfect example, 2017, going into Doug Peterson's second year. His second year, uh, Mike Lombardi, remember that thing back? He comes out, says, Doug Peterson is the worst coach in the league, okay? That's what he said, and, and, and it got even worse. Then he said that uh, the front office knows that Doug doesn't know what he's doing, the coaches know Doug doesn't know what he's doing, the players know he doesn't know what he's doing, and Jim Schwartz is really in control, and Jim Schwartz is just waiting for him you know, to officially be named head coach and he was just waiting for Doug Peterson to screw up. This is what he reported. Okay, you remember I, I got pissed off at this video. I did I said Doug has to Doug has to have some balls fire back if that's what's going on. Doug Peterson Corleone. Well we're gonna need Nick Seriani Corleone and uh, you know I did a whole skit on it. Maybe I'll put it at the end of the video for those that don't know uh my Doug Peterson Corleone. Nick Seriani's gotta fire back. Gotta fire back, you know? Um if if these guys are really coming out and saying things. Uh, I think Nick Sirianni's getting a bad deal. I think he's getting a bad deal so far by the media, by what people have seen in his press conference. So what? He was nervous in a press conference. So what? For who? For what? Who cares? He was nervous. It doesn't mean he doesn't know football. Okay, he said something about rock, paper, scissors. People made a big deal of it. I knew exactly what he was talking about. He was talking about relating to a guy, breaking ice, making things not feel as awkward, and just being a, a good guy. I like him. I like his temperament. I like his positivity. I like his energy. He is my cannoli eating friend. I love him. Okay, so... I think this is a lot of bull crap. And it was so nice to see Lane Johnson, who, by the way, like the other day, was going around making around to the media talking about how good Nick Sariani is, is, how much he likes him, how, how he holds everybody accountable. And then you get this story from Michael Robinson about uh, Nick Sariani not being a good, you know, not being liked by maybe some of the players or some of the players questioning him already before we've had one practice, before we've had one practice. I mean, think about what I said before we've had one practice. That's how ridiculous this is, okay? This is like somebody saying J.J. Ortega Whiteside is going to be a pro bowler this year or is even going to make this team this year. And, you know, you, you, it's interesting, speaking of him, just to change the subject real quick, but uh, what is it? Uh, Keneal Harry is on the trade block, requests a trade for the Patriots. Uh, we got J.J. Ortega Whiteside. Hey, maybe you do a little swap there, you know what I mean? There's some talk of that. Uh that's what's, that's what's so good about having these uh, practices with other teams. The GMs get a chance to talk. You never know. You never know. But anyways, back to Nick Sariani, you know. So Nick Sariani, you know, has now unnamed players on his roster that don't trust him, according to Mike Robinson, right? Um, Lane Johnson fired back. He said, he said, fake news, BS, name your sources. And I couldn't agree with Lane Johnson more. Exactly. He won't name him. Uh, and, and you know what? This story is just going to die. But what's so interesting about it is that the, the, the connections between the 2017 Eagles roster and um, the 2021 Eagles roster is very interesting. It's hot as hell in here. What the hell, man? I, I got to have the air at 65 degrees. 
What is it at? Like 70? I don't like this. It's too hot. Jeez, it's hot. It was a hundred. It was 115 degrees here the other day. 115 degrees. I don't even live in the desert. It's ridiculous. Anyways, so the the connections between the 2017 uh, Eagles and this Eagles team, I think there's a lot of them. I think there's a lot of similarities. I hope that the end result's the same, but there's a lot of similarities. You have two, you know, 2017, second year quarterback. 2017, second year quarterback. Both who were doubted, by the way. Head coach uh, getting trashed by people within the organization of unnamed sources, supposedly. Uh, that happened in 2017, Doug Peterson. 2017, or 2021, Nick Sirianni, that's happening too. Uh, the Eagles were not going to be a very good team, according to everybody, in 2017. Uh, same thing with 2021. So there's a lot of connect, a lot of similarities between 2017, 2021. Now they... 2021 is going to have to go out there and perform on the field. I, I don't know that I think they can win a Super Bowl, but I think they can win the division. I keep saying that all the time. Uh, so, I mean, what is the Eagles training camp? What is the Eagles preseason without uh, somebody coming out saying unnamed sources are basically trashing your coach? Uh, football season is about to begin, and I, I can't wait. I like Nick Sirianni. I want to give him a chance. I want to give him an opportunity. I don't want to judge him based upon a press conference, based upon something he says in an interview. I don't care about that. Just get on the field, coach, use guys the right way, develop talent, and win games, baby. And we good. We good. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. And of course, don't be a dingbat. Right, you got a coup d'etat at hand, a coup d'etat at hand. You need to find your inner Doug Peterson Corleone. Hey, yo, everybody, how you doing? Doug Peterson Corleone is here. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? How you doing? How you doing, buddy? You still sticking it everywhere. I told you, women weak in legs. They're weak in legs. Hey, what size shoe you wear? What size shoe you wear? 13, 13, get over here, get over here. Jim Schwartz. You think you can do my job? You think you can do my job? Do you think you can do my job? You can't do my job, your sister's ass. Your sister's ass. I'm gonna take your head. I'm gonna. Bash you, think about you doing your thinking job. Get him. He doesn't fall. Stop on his head. Stop on his head. Stop on him, stop on him! He's in front of his head, in front of his head! Yeah, yeah, yeah! The front of his head! Yeah! 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 Yeah, just like that! Yeah, it's down for him! Yeah! Yeah! You think he can do my job? King Dingbat! <laughs>